What's going on guys? John Holder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to add sale functionality to our e-commerce app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to add the ability to add sales to our products. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we added these product images to our main page programmatically. In this video, I want to add the ability to one, put these products on sale, and two, change the way they look on this page when they are on sale. So we'll change this to the sale price. We'll have the original price with a line through it, we'll have a little sale icon up on the picture. If you remember back at our template thing here that we downloaded. You can see here it says little sale, this little badge thing here. And we've got this stuff. Maybe we'll add these stars for fun. I don't know. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. The first thing we need to do is change our model. So let's head over here to our store directory and let's open our models.py file. And down here in our product model, we need to make some changes. So let's add sale stuff like that. What we need here is basically a couple of things. We need the ability to determine, hey, is this thing on sale? Yes or no, true or false? And if so, what's the sale price? We're gonna add something called a Boolean field first. And I'm gonna call this is underscore sale. And this is going to equal a models dot boolean field. And then we're going to give this a default of false. So by default, a product is not on sale. It is false that it is a sale. And this could be either true or false. That's what boolean means. Boolean means true or false. So this is going to be true if it's on sale. It's going to be false if it's not on sale. So pretty simple. Now we just need to keep track of what the sale price is. So let's create another variable called sale underscore price. And we're gonna set that equal to basically the same thing as our price up here. So let's come down here and just paste that in. This is gonna be a decimal field because we want this to be a decimal number, you know, 9.95 or something like that, $9.95 or whatever. And the default is nothing. Decimal place is two, so you know, $19.95, that's two decimal places. And the max digits is six. That's like, I don't know, what did we say, $10,000 or less, something like that. Okay, so go ahead and save this. Now, this is a major change we've made to the model. And anytime you make a major change to the model, you need to make a new migration and then push that migration into the database. So let's head over to our terminal and let's hit Control C to break out of here. You'll notice I'm still in my C ecom slash ecom directory. My virtual environment is turned on. And then let's go Python manage.py, make migrations, all one word and plural. And this will add those two fields that we just created, the is sale field and the sale price field. Now let's run Python manage.py migrate. And this will push that migration into the database. And it looks like that worked, no errors. All right, so now let's run our server again. Let's go Python manage.py run server. And let's head back over to the website and let's take a look at the admin section here. You may have to log in again, but let's come down here to products. And let's pick one, let's PHP programming book. And you can see now we have this little thing here that says is sale and we can check it or not. So if it is on sale, we check it. If it's not by default, you can see it's not checked. And then down here we have the sale price. So let's change this to $6.99. It's originally $11.98. And let's mark this is sale. So, all right, I guess we could, I guess we could have just called it sale, but I don't know, is sale. Yes, it is sale <laughs> or is on sale. Maybe would be a better name, whatever. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, when we come back here and click it again, you can see this is still checked. We've got a sale price. So, all right, very cool. Now let's head back over to the web page, and you'll see down here on our PHP programming book, it still has the regular price. Nothing has changed. So, in order for this new change to be reflected on the web page, we need to make some changes to our HTML page, our template file. So let's head back over to our code and let's go to our templates and our home page and come down here to this section here where we've got our for loop. And this is the loop that's looping through all of our products. We looked at this in the last video and it's putting out that card thing with the image and the product name and all that good stuff right there. So 
let's run some logic inside of here. So let's go if is underscore sale. Now, this is the same as is sale equals true. But we could just say, hey, if is sale, that's like saying if is sale is true, then let's just say sale. Else, we want to do all of this. So now we need to come down here. And inside of here, we need to end that if statement. So end if all one word. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and just come back over here and see what the heck this did. So let's hit reload. And it doesn't look like it did anything. Because we forgot that let's look at this here, everything inside of here is product dot something product dot name product dot price, uh, product dot image URL. Same thing here, this needs to be product dot is sale. All right. So now we run this, that should work. And okay, we've got all of the regular images, but for the one that's on sale, now it just says sale, right? And all the stuff is missing. So all right, at least now we know this code is working. So all we have to do is basically copy all of this stuff and put it inside of here instead of the word sale. So let's paste all this in here. And now we just need to come through here and make some changes. So the first thing we need to do is let's change this price. Let's make this a strike through. So let's go strike. And this is just basic HTML. And then we need to close our strike tag. And let me put this on separate lines. So it's a little bit easier to read. There we go. So let's just save that and, and just see what that looks like. It should be intuitive. But here we have oh, what's going on here? Oh, I misspelled strike, strink, <laughs> strike. There we go. All right, so save that all the errors today. Now we have this strike through. So okay, that's cool. Now we can also next to this have the actual price. So here, I'm just going to grab this guy right here. And beneath this, let's paste that in and change this from price to sale underscore price. Go ahead and save that. Why sale price? Because in our model here, that's what we name this variable, right? So all right, let's take a look at that. And okay, now we've got this. Now these are right next to each other, you might want to put a little space or something there. So we can do that. Uh, we could just add a space. Or we can go, let's see, and NBSP. This is sort of code for put a space there. Right? So if we come back over here and hit reload. All right, now there's a little bit of space between them. All right, looking good. So now we want to put that little badge thing up here. How do we do that? Well, that was in that template that we installed a couple of videos ago, and we've deleted all that extra, you know, template stuff in the last video. But I happen to remember what it was. <laughs> so uh, it's basically, let me just copy this and paste it in. We want to come up here right above our product image. And we want to paste this sales badge in right there. And all this is is div class and then equals to and inside of the equals to it's going to be badge and then bg dash dark, and then text dash white position dash absolute. And then we want to give it a style of top 0 0.5 rem right 0 0.5 rem, and then have whatever we want it to say we want it to say sale and then close the div. So if we save this head back over here, and hit reload, and now we get this little sales badge. Now this is a dark image. And this is a dark badge. And maybe that doesn't look so great. You can change this around however you want. So instead of BG dark, we could say BG light. And instead of text white, we could say text black. So if we save that head back over here and hit reload. Now it says sale in a little white badge with black text. So however you want it, whatever your product images look like, that's going to determine sort of how that goes. Really, that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this back because I like the dark better. And come back here and hit reload. And very cool. So we've got a little badge, we've got our old price and our new price. Now maybe we want to put something on the screen that says sale or you know, something crazy like that. Well, we can do that too. If you remember, in the original template file, there was those little stars there, we can use those as well. So head back over here. And still inside this if product is sale block, right, we can play around here. So let's come down here to the price. And I don't know, let's say sale. 
right? I don't know. And then here, actually, let me just copy this code again and paste it. And this is all kind of smooshing over. So let me just there, <laughs> pull this over so it's easier to read. We want to div and then close our div here with a class deflex justify content dash center. We want to make it small. We want to give it a text warning with an MB dash two. And then inside of here, we want to put a star. This is a div with a class by star fill and then close that. Here I've put a couple of line, a couple of spaces and then the word sale and then a couple more spaces and then another star and then we just close that div. So let's go ahead and save that and take a look and see what that is. And when we do that, we see now down here it says sale and there's a couple little stars. I don't know, maybe you like that, maybe you don't. We're basically just sort of playing around at this point, uh, but I don't know, it's just another way to make it jump out and say sale, you know. Obviously this is not super professional looking anyway, this whole theme we're using, this is just to kind of get us started. Later on, we'll make this look more professional, but I don't know, it's fun. And so I think we'll leave it in there and that's all there is to it. So that's how to make a determination on whether a product is a sale or not. Remember, it's really just a matter of creating an if statement inside of our for loop. And then if the conditions are met for this if statement, if the product is on sale, then we're gonna print out a whole different set of sort of template-y stuff all the way down to here. Else, if it's not on sale, we're just gonna print out the regular template stuff. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.